As you're probably aware, nucleic acids, both DNA and RNA, are always replicated in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, that is by adding on to the 3' prime end of the strand. We're going to take a look at the mechanism of the reaction involved to see why it is that nucleic acids are replicated 5' prime to 3' prime. In order to do that, first let's talk about the terminology. Here we have, this would be a nucleotide, a base, sugar, and phosphate. The sugar in this case is deoxyribose, this would be in DNA. If we were looking at RNA, we'd have ribose. Ribose would be different only by having a hydroxyl group right here. And we number the five carbons in the sugar. One prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, the one outside the ring is five prime. If you look at a DNA molecule, it has two strands. The two strands are anti-parallel, that is, they're oriented in the opposite direction from each other. If we look at one of those strands, this one here at the top, we've got a nucleotide here, and the 5' prime carbon of this nucleotide just has a phosphate group on it. It's not attached to another nucleotide. You can think of this 5' prime end as being, this 5' prime carbon is the available part of the nucleotide here. So this is the 5' prime end. Down here at the other end, you've got a 3' prime carbon that just has a hydroxyl group on it. It's available, you could add something on there. So this is the 3' prime end of the strand. This is the spot where we could add another nucleotide in DNA synthesis. If we need to think about the substrates that are necessary for every DNA polymerase. The enzyme that catalyzes DNA synthesis, DNA polymerase, requires a few things. First of all, they require deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates. By that I mean you've got a base, a sugar, and three phosphate groups on it. Base and sugar is a nucleoside. This is a nucleoside triphosphate, and it's a deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate because it's got deoxyribose in it. If you look at this, you may realize that this is very similar to ATP, which is a molecule that's used as an energy source in lots of reactions. ATP, as used by as an energy source for in enzymatic reactions, has ribose in it. It's R-ATP. This one's D-ATP, but otherwise very similar. And the way that you get energy out of ATP is by hydrolyzing the bonds that hold these extra phosphates on. You take off one or two of those, and that releases energy. Similarly, in the process of DNA synthesis, we're going to remove the two extra phosphates, leaving behind phosphate, sugar, and base, a nucleotide. And in the process of doing that, that hydrolysis that removes those extra phosphates is going to provide energy to drive the reaction to form a new bond, which is actually a dehydration synthesis reaction. The other requirement that DNA polymerases have, there are two other things. First of all, they have to have a template. So you have to have a single strand of DNA somewhere that lines up the new nucleotides in the right order. And their incoming DNTPs are going to pair by complementary base pairing with bases that are on that existing template strand. The other thing is it also requires a primer. The primer is a place where the DNA molecule is already double-stranded. It's got to have a three-prime end available on it. And the DNA polymerase acts by adding DNTPs onto that three-prime end. Let's look at why. So we zoom in on that. Here's the template. Here's the three-prime end of the primer. At the very three-prime end of it, we've got this adenine nucleotide. There's the three-prime carbon in that, and it has a hydroxyl group. Here's our template, the next nucleotide, the next base in the template is a cytosine. So we've got here a DNTP that's going to pair by complementary base pairing. With a, it's got a guanine on it. So that gets that DNTP in, in place. It's ready to be covalently attached onto the end here. In order for that to happen, you've got this 3 prime hydroxyl group. The oxygen has a couple of pairs of electrons out there. The electrons are attracted to protons, of course. And this phosphorus has a lot of protons, that big nucleus. So the electrons are attracted to it. We refer to this as a nucleophilic attack. This, if those electrons can shove in there so they're shared between the oxygen and the phosphorus, we'll have a covalent bond there. The only problem is this phosphorus already has four oxygens attached to it. That's all you can attach. It's all the bonding it can do. So in order for this bond to form, one of those oxygens has to leave. Normally, that's going to be really hard. An oxygen bound to the phosphorus 
The strong covalent bonds can be very difficult to pull it out of there. But this oxygen is also attached to these two extra phosphates, which are just represented here as P's and circles. The two extra phosphates, and they also have a magnesium attached to them. Magnesium is a cofactor for this reaction, and every DNA polymerase uses magnesium as a cofactor. By having this positive ion here and these two phosphate groups, it changes the charge distribution in this bond, so it sort of sucks the electrons over this way, weakening this bond and making it relatively easy to pull that oxygen away from the phosphorus. That means that this nucleophilic attack will succeed because this oxygen is easy to push away. We say that the oxygen with the two extra phosphates attached to it constitute a good leaving group. Now let's take a look at what happens when it leaves. There it is, it's gone, and now the oxygen that was in that hydroxyl is covalently bound to the phosphorus. That one already is, through this oxygen, covalently bound to the 5' prime carbon in this nucleotide. So now we have formed a 5' prime to 3' prime phosphodiester bond that holds the new nucleotide onto the end of the strand. This is the new 3' prime end of the strand. We've elongated the primer by one nucleotide. In the meantime, the group that came off, the leaving group, is this molecule, two phosphates attached to each other. This is known as a pyrophosphate. And pyrophosphate in the cell is almost immediately hydrolyzed by an enzyme called pyrophosphatase into two inorganic phosphates. That means that the concentration of pyrophosphate in the cell at any given moment is very low. So we think about it, you think about this as a dynamic equilibrium, you've got the substrates here, the products here, one of the products is always in very low concentration. What does that do to the equilibrium? Pushes it forward. So we have here a good leaving group, gets the oxygen out of there, allowing this oxygen to bind. The leaving group itself is kept at low concentration by pyrophosphatase. Everything works together to make this reaction go. It's favorable for the reaction to proceed. Well, what if we tried it the other way? What if we tried to take one of these DNTPs and stick it on the other end? Let's try it. Here you've got the template strand. Here you've got the primer, and this is the five prime end of the primer. So there's the last nucleotide at the top, and the five prime end. We've got a five prime carbon with just a phosphate on it. And here's our incoming DNTP. And it's paired with the complementary base on the template. Here's this three prime hydroxyl. We're going to join 5' prime to 3' prime, and the enzyme is only allowing 5' prime and 3' prime to get joined together. This oxygen has to make a nucleophilic attack on that phosphorus, and there's no good leaving group there. You're going to have to yank one of these hydroxyls off there, and that's not going to be easy. The problem is the nature of the substrate, the DNTPs that we're using, the reactive spot in this DNTP is up here where we got the two extra phosphates on the five prime carbon of the DNTP. Three prime carbon of the DNTP is just a hydroxyl. There's nothing especially reactive happening there. As a result, it would be very, very difficult to add this on here. You'd need an energy source from somewhere else to add a nucleotide to the five prime end. While the DNTP, if you add it on the three prime end, essentially it supplies its own energy source in the, in the shape of these two extra phosphates that make such a good leaving group. As a result, all nucleic acids are synthesized by adding to the three prime end. If you want the illustrations in this, all of them are in my Flickr account. They're Creative Commons licensed, so you can use them non-commercially. Feel free to download them.